All right, so I'm gonna show how to replace the battery on this 15 inch MacBook Pro model A1707, late 2016. So first things first, um, the customer had a loose uh, key and that was because one of these little clips broke. So on their keyboard, um, you probably can't see it, but one of these little latches broke. I have a video showing how to replace these keys. So if you need that, um, just let me know and I will forward you a link to that. So anyways, we got a replacement key. I'm gonna stick that on, okay, just like that and clip that into place and now it's good. Most of the times the key will, the clips on the key will break, but if the white part, the hinges underneath break, um, I'm not sure how you would replace those. I think they're glued down, but yeah, I haven't replaced those, so I'm not too sure. Anyways, First thing we're going to do to replace the battery is remove all the screws, all right? We're going to need a Pentalobe uh, 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. Okay, so go ahead and get one of those. And then we're most likely going to need a T5 and possibly a T3 screwdriver to replace the battery. Um, actually, this model, we have to take the whole motherboard out or the logic board to replace the battery, so keep that in mind. Um, this is not going to be an easy job. Even with just taking out the battery, it's kind of a pain, but you'll see in a bit why um, it's even worse. All right, so first thing, we're gonna remove all the screws. I keep um, try and keep them in order. I do that by putting them with the flat side down in the pattern I remove them. So you can see two here, and then you got four here. Okay, and yeah, so anyways, this video, again, um, this job is not going to be an easy one, so keep that in mind. Uh, you might want to watch the entire video before you go through with buying a battery, just in case you want to end up sending it somewhere else to do the job. Okay, if this video does help you guys, please like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can also work on their devices. If it helps save you a bunch of money, please consider um, throwing a little bit my way. Even a dollar, anything is great and I really appreciate it, all right? And we'll continue with the repair. So let's remove all the screws. So there's four along the bottom and then there's two up along where the hinges are. Once you remove those, it helps to use a suction cup. You can also use tape where you kind of just tape like that and then have it meet at the in the middle to make a tab so you can pull this out. But this model, um, because it has an air vent here, you can kind of like get under there. I just go under there with my fingernail and then once you do that, you can get underneath this metal cover piece. All right, once you get under that metal cover piece, you can go ahead and get un work your way down the side. And then I use my thumb to push down while I pull up on the side with my fingers, just like that, and then it pops the clips out. Um, there was a big puff of dust that came out, so I'm very likely going to have to clean this up. Oh man, my work area is getting all dusty. All right, then work your way down the other side, same thing, and pop it out. Wow, that's a lot of dust. Okay, that's probably why their battery is bad. It probably got overheated. All right, so anyways, now that we got those clips, there are clips in the middle too, but usually once you pop the side clips, those middle clips already release. So what I do is I put the MacBook up like this, Okay, and then what I do is I wrap some fingers over this so that it doesn't fall over and then I use one finger to push down here and then I grab the cover here and pull down. Okay, just like that. On some models, it's um, really easy. This one was a little bit easier. Some of them, it's really difficult and you have to pull really hard. If it's not coming out, then just know you might have to pull harder. So here you can see how dusty it is inside. Wow, that's pretty bad. In the camera, it actually doesn't look that bad, but on here you can see a very fine... Um, layer of dust. Maybe it's just the screen I'm using to watch what I'm recording and then all of these fan blades are filled with dust. So I'm going to clean all of this up and then I'll be back to remove this battery. We're going to have to, um, technically we don't have to pull the whole motherboard out, but we will have to take the motherboard screws out so that we can lift it slightly. All right. And you'll see when I go ahead and do that. All right. I'm going to clean up the dust and I will be back. I'll see you guys with a much cleaner MacBook. All right. See you guys in a bit. Alright, so I'm back, here we go, it's a lot cleaner now, a lot less dust in there, alright, we're going to set that aside, okay, so first thing you want to do, we're going to disconnect the battery, the way you do that, let me zoom in a bit, okay, so right here you have this little taped on, it's basically a sticker kind of, 
So we're gonna peel this up. It's only held on in a few places. Be careful with all the cables around here, but you're basically gonna just peel this up slowly. Okay, don't try and rip it off real quick. You wanna slowly peel it up so that way you can get the adhesive strips to come with it. All right, and some will stay on the board and some will come up with here. So here you can see this is what it looks like and it's just holding on in these few little places. All right, so we're gonna set that aside. Next, we're going to disconnect this cable. This cable is very important. If you break this cable or if you don't reconnect it, it's not gonna work, all right? You won't be able to charge your battery. You won't be able to work, use your computer with the battery. So first thing, we're gonna peel up this plastic piece here, this black plastic strip. Hold that aside. Then what we're gonna do, flip this latch up, all right? It's pretty small, but you can see, flip that up and then grab as close as you can to the uh, connector and then just wiggle and pull it back just like that. This is held in with a little adhesive, so you wanna be careful. I try and grab as close to where the adhesive starts and then use that to slowly peel it up just like that. Um, I believe this cable is part of the battery, so the replacement battery should have this, but either way, you wanna be careful because if you break this, there's a chance you can short the pins and you can cause damage to the computer. All right, next we're going to use a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Okay, get that, remove the screw right here, this big screw. So this is the battery connect to the motherboard. Um, I'm not sure why it needs a separate cable and that battery connect, but if you break or you don't connect one of the two or either of them, then you're not gonna be able to use the computer with the battery. Anyways, once you remove that screw, you can see it's still touching the board. So what you gotta do, just get underneath and lift it slightly, all right? And then it should stay up just like that. <clears throat> you don't wanna bend it too much because then when you go ahead and put it back, it might not line up right. And also if you bend it back and forth too many times, this tab can snap off and then you'll never be able to use your computer or get the battery working again. All right, there's this little connector here that allows you to, you can buy like a expensive data recovery or hard drive um, reading kit, but there's no removable SSD in here, no removable RAM or anything. I do um, screen repairs on these, so um, if you wanna know how to do that, I have videos of that up as well. All right, so once you um, flip this tab up and have this cable removed, you're gonna wanna open up the MacBook and then you're gonna press and hold the power button. It's probably off screen, but press and hold the power button here for about 10 to 15 seconds. This will drain any power from the motherboard and will greatly reduce any risk of damaging. All right, so I'm just gonna keep holding that. About 10, 15 seconds. All right, that's probably long enough. Okay, so next thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna remove the uh, trackpad. Let me zoom out. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna remove the trackpad here uh, because the battery is right um, uh, underneath or here, this cable's over it. And if you don't, there's a good chance you'll end up damaging the trackpad or the cable. All right, so let's go ahead and remove that. Uh, I believe we need to switch to a T3 screwdriver. So let's go ahead and switch. Okay, Torx, Torx 3 screwdriver. We'll remove the two screws here, holding this metal plate in place. All right, one and two. We're very likely going to have to remove all the other screws holding the motherboard as well. You'll see why in a bit. The main thing is we have to lift it up slightly. I'm gonna show how to do it without completely taking the logic board out of the computer. Um, it does make it a little bit trickier because you have to maneuver the wire underneath the motherboard. So if you look here, these parts, these cables go underneath the logic board here. But um, if you can lift the logic board just high enough to clear these aluminum housing here, then you can actually slide that cable underneath. Anyways, once we remove that bracket, we're gonna remove this um, trackpad connector. I just get my fingernails under here and I just use that, kind of wiggle it as I pull it, just like this on the corners. All right, and there we go. This cable, you wanna slowly peel it up. I like to hold it down here, so that way when you peel it, it doesn't suddenly like tear it out. All right, and then you wanna try and keep the cable flat as possible. You don't wanna like roll it backwards. So what I do is I grab as close to the adhesive as possible pull it this way while I'm pulling it up 
and that way it kind of keeps the cable flat. So here you can see just like this. Okay. And I'm holding down here so I don't accidentally like snap the cable backwards. All right, so there you go. Just like that. Oh, the adhesive is coming away. It's st staying on the battery. Um, so you are going to want to transfer the adhesive or you can get another adhesive. Um, technically the adhesive isn't really needed, but we're just going to transfer it over so that it's stuck down like how it is originally. All right. Oops. I accidentally folded over the sticker a little bit. You can use any double stick adhesive for this really, but, uh, I would like to try and use what they put in here. Okay. So, yeah. Um, it might have stuck to itself too much. I don't know if I can separate all of it. Let's see. This adhesive is pretty light, so no big deal. All right, let's go ahead and stick this back down onto the cable. It did get folded a little, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right. Oh, this part has too much dirt on it. It won't stick down. Yeah, I might end up using my own adhesive because this adhesive got kind of gross. So let's go ahead and just peel this off, actually. And I'll just use some other double stick adhesive that I got. All right, so we'll set that aside. Okay, so now we're going to undo the uh, trackpad. I believe, are those T5 or T3? Let's go ahead and get the T5 and check. These are T5 or Torx 5 screws. So we're going to remove all the trackpad screws. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, let's remove all those screws. Not sure if we have to remove this middle one. I think we do. So let's go ahead and just remove all of them to be safe. Okay, again, there's a lot of screws here. Um, so hopefully you guys will be able to keep them all in order. I, again, just put them in the pattern, you remove them, and that should help you see. Try and keep them further, like somewhat far away from the computer so you don't accidentally knock them over while working on the computer. All right, those are some ho hopefully helpful tips so that you guys don't end up making mistakes and knocking things over. Okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna remove all of them just to be safe. One, two, three. All right, so once we got all of that, we're gonna lift the MacBooks uh, open. All right, you wanna carefully open it up, letting the trackpad cable, you don't wanna flip this over, so you wanna be very careful, open it up the way I'm doing it, just like this. All right, let the trackpad cable fall through. You might have to now grab the trackpad from underneath, okay? And again, you don't wanna flip the trackpad over. We're gonna have to just rotate this cable to slide down into the gap, so let's open it further. Okay, rotate this, and then rotate it that way, and there we go. So the reason you don't wanna flip it over, if you look underneath here, there's these little um, washers here. Oh, even without flipping it, look, two of these washers came out. They're super light, and I don't even know, they just come out on their own, so there we go. So we're gonna get those out. I'm gonna have to brush this off, because it is dirty. Um, so I'll clean this up a little bit and I will be back. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so I cleaned it up. You have to be very careful with this, even just lightly brushing it. Like these little washers were, like came out and then I had to like go and search for them. They flew out and fell on my floor. All right, luckily I have like a strong magnet I used to get them. And then I also opened this and cleaned the other side. It was really dusty. I mean, it's still kind of dirty in there but I couldn't really get it out with the toothbrush so 
should be okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, again, we're going to have to remove the battery, but it is tucked underneath. So let's go ahead and start removing screws to get the battery out. All right, so I'm gonna stick with the T5 and see if there's any T5 screws I need to remove. So there's these two definitely for the battery that we need to remove, okay. Let's go ahead and remove those two. Again, we're gonna have to um, keep the screws aside. Let me see if I can put the trackpad somewhere safe here. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep the screws off to the side, all right? And you wanna keep them all in order, again, because they are different size, shape, and lengths. If you mix them up, you can actually damage the computer. All right, so here you can see this piece moves now, but it is trapped under the motherboard, so let's go ahead and start removing motherboard screws. All right, let's see here. So, I don't remember if there were T5, I think there's four T5 screws. Actually, all the motherboard screws seem to be T5 screws, except for this little bracket here. So let's see if we can do this by just removing the motherboard screws and not actually um, taking out all the connectors. So I don't know if I did a video on this one, how to remove the logic board completely, but I don't want to risk causing more damage to the computer. So I'm just going to do um, the minimum removal as possible. So let's go ahead and remove these screws. One there, this one is actually T3. Okay, so two of these are T3, the rest are T5, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and remove that. Okay, uh, let's see, let's go ahead and remove this one up here. Okay, other one here. Okay, this one holding down the wireless antennas. Here. And this one off over here. Hopefully we won't have to take everything completely out. Okay, so we've got all of that. Let's go ahead and switch to the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. And remove the two screws over here on the motherboard. Okay, so we've got this one. stuck in there. Hmm. The screw's like coming up, but it's also not, so that's really strange. I don't know what's holding it into place. Oh, I think the screw mount below is actually coming out. That's why the screw wasn't, there we go. I retightened it so that the screw mount held back down. If it doesn't come out, you can actually leave the screw there. Um, because there's a little mount that helps hold it down to the motherboard. Um, yeah, and if that's, see, like right now it's not coming out. It's The screw is staying attached to that mount. So I'm tightening it to hopefully get that screw mount to tighten better. But if it doesn't work, so it doesn't seem like it's working on this one. It's actually lifting both pieces at the same time. So what I'm going to have to do is just leave it there, all right? So let's see here. Now, as you can see, we can kind of lift up the motherboard slightly. Okay, but it is still being held down. So we might have to take out more components. So we can kind of lift this up here, you can see. Yeah, if you work it, you can actually lift this up and get it out without taking the whole thing out. Um, let me see what I can do for this. Because you'd want to have something under here to help you hold this up. So if you have like maybe a credit card or something, you can use like bits of a credit card and then get that in between. Let's see if it fits, kind of, not really. Then you can use that to help you lift it up, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty difficult. So let's see, what is kind of holding this down here? I don't think the speaker cable is. Let me try, we'll, we'll remove the speaker cable here so what I do is I just get underneath with my fingernails. You can use whatever plastic pry tools. Don't use metal tools for this. Get as close as you can to the connector here. All right, and then you kind of just lift that up. Let me see, it's, the adhesive is kind of being a pain. Get underneath there, all right, and then pop the connector just like this. 
Okay, there we go. Let's see if that helps, if I can lift this more than before. Kind of. Okay. Again, I don't want to remove everything in here, so I'm going to just kind of remove the minimum. Okay. So now that I can kind of lift up here, so I can lift the board if you want. You can kind of get a card or something under there. Okay. And you can use that to help you hold this up. All right, so we're gonna do that on both sides. Uh, let's see if this, if the other side is also possible to lift up or not. All right, so let's see here. So this side, we can lift it. Working my way over to the other side here. Okay, it's also difficult. I might have to disconnect that cable, um, but it doesn't seem like it's holding it down. So I think it's mostly the speaker. So again, we're gonna get underneath the speaker cable. Actually, let me zoom in so you can get a better view of how I'm doing this. Okay, so I'm just getting my fingernail underneath. This is to scrape up the adhesive. Okay, just like that. And then as we get as close as possible to the connector, then we can pry up the this end. So you wanna pry up at the plastic as close as you can, all right? So just like that, and there we go. Okay, so hopefully that's good enough that, yeah, we can lift it a lot higher. So basically what we're going to do is get some cards under here just to kind of hold this up enough that we can slide this part of the battery cable out. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to prying the battery out. So this is somewhat of a pain. Um, you're going to have to use, I use this thin pry tool. A lot of people complain saying, oh, it's metal, you're going to damage it, but... This is what works. I've heard other people use floss. I've tried that. It doesn't work. It cuts my fingers. Maybe if you can get it to work, you can do it. But uh, I use this tool. So this one, after using it a lot, it actually got uh, permanently bent a little bit like this. When I use it, I use it this way underneath. So that way it scrapes underneath the battery. If you put it this way, it will cut into the battery. So you want to be careful. This isn't a knife. It's more like a spatula and it's flexible and bendy like this. Okay. So you want something flexible. Don't use like a like a knife that's like super sharp and solid because then you won't be able to get this out without damaging things, all right? So the way I do it, I start here like this, and then I just push the tool underneath the battery cell packs, all right, just like that. And you just work your way down cutting all the adhesive, all right? Just like this. Okay, so we got that. Then we turn it over so that we can cut the adhesive here and do the same thing. Okay, work your way all the way to get underneath the entire battery pack. Just like that, there we go. So you can see this is loose now. We're gonna do the same thing with this side. Okay, just run the tool underneath there like this. Okay, move it over and just continue cutting all the adhesive here, there we go. Then we'll turn it around and we'll do the same with the other side, just like this. Okay. Hopefully this adhesive peels off easily like the other ones. And then you want to kind of see if you can just slide it back and forth to make sure it's all completely removed. Okay. And then this part can be a little tricky. Depending where the gap is, that's where you have to... Oh, I accidentally trapped this cable under there. Okay. So depending where the gap is for the center packs, you might be able to do it this way. If you do it that way, just be careful that you're not gonna um, touch any of this stuff with the metal tool. Um, if you did the battery drain, you'll probably be okay, but either way, you don't wanna scrape these things and damage them. So if you can't get that way, the safest is if you can go this way, but the problem is, as you can see, there's not much gap. Here, there's a lot more gap, so I can get a more straight uh, path underneath, okay? So again, just use whichever way works. Um, you can also try and go this way as well. The only thing with um, prying up this part, you want to be careful because there are these big gaps here. And if you accidentally puncture the battery, you can actually start by going this way too in the, in the gap here. But yeah, so actually let me try it. I've never done it that way. Um, so I don't know if I should. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna, yeah, we'll just do it the way I usually do it. So get the tool, and then I'm gonna go in from this side, okay? 
and you want to be careful. I'm putting my hand under here so that way if it goes into one of those gaps, I will feel it before it actually goes like down into the screen or something. So as you can see, it's going well. Okay, so we should be fine. Let's go ahead and continue through. Okay. And we're just going to continue scraping this up. So this thing has this metal barrier here that makes it a little nicer. Um, but again, if you want, you can go this way. might be a little safer. Okay. So now I can feel it's going um, under the metal frame. So you don't want it to do that to go through those holes. So we're just going to keep working our way over this way. And sometimes you can kind of work it just by doing this. So yeah, that actually works. Okay. Now let's go over to this side and cut it. Oh, I can actually smell. Oops, I think I might have pulled some, the, the thing out when I did it that way. All right, so let's continue cutting the battery out. Okay, just like that. Okay, there we go. So we got the whole battery pack released. Now we're going to pull the cabling out from here. So again, it helps to use like some credit cards or something to help you lift up the board. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, we're gonna lift this piece up, whichever way you can kind of get in there to kind of lift the board. Okay, just like this. Then I'm gonna get the card under there to help hold it up. Alright, we're going to do the same thing on this side. Lift it up, get the card in there, and it helps to kind of have it rested like this so that it's resting on the speaker. Okay. Oops. Okay, there we go. So just like that. Okay, this card's kind of in the way. I might have to use a smaller card, but yeah, let's use a smaller piece. You can just cut it up. All right, so we'll get this card in there in the corner. There we go. So now it's holding the board up. You can see there's this gap here. So what we're going to do, lift the battery packs up, slowly pull it back and guide the wire. Here you can see this wire comes out. So we're going to guide those wires out from there and slowly twist and lift. We're going to have to lift this whole thing out, this whole battery pack thing and try not to let it touch underneath there. So there we go, we got this out. And here you can see when I was sliding it sideways instead of cutting it this way, I accidentally punctured that a little bit. So I can smell it. Um, you wanna be careful. I think uh, those fumes are toxic. It smells sweet, it actually smells nice, but, <laughs> but it is bad for you. I've never had one go on fire. Um, but as you can see, the safest way is you just cut through like this. Don't try and like do it this way because then your tool is kind of like bending that and then when you cut it and that's what ended up, I ended up puncturing it that way. So, all right. So usually I don't do it that way, but I thought it would be faster. <laughs> so I guess doing it faster, of course, um, shortcuts cause problems. So, all right. So there we go. We're going to scrape out all this old adhesive here. Okay. So I'm going to use a plastic, um, razor blade here and basically what I'm going to do is just kind of get a little bit uh, edge of it up and then you can grab hopefully this adhesive isn't the kind that just tears when you try and pull it out so get kind of a corner up and then you can grab the adhesive and you can slowly peel it away yep and then as you can see if you do that there's a lot less residue um, if you kind of just scrape it here you can see there's a lot of residue left behind here so I'm gonna do that if you want to be safe, you can take these out and let the motherboard go down for now while you do that so you don't accidentally like knock it. All right, so set that aside. All right, let's peel up all these adhesive strips. Okay, so for the most part, the adhesive strips are intact, so we shouldn't have too much residue to clean up. Okay, just peel it like that. I actually have a giant box of these batteries. If anyone knows a way to properly recycle them, let me know. Because right now, they're all just um, piled up. Okay. 
yeah, right now I just have them all in a box. So um, if anyone has any recommendations, I don't know. I might end up having fun with them and just taking a BB gun and shooting them and see what happens if they actually catch on fire or anything. Maybe make a video of that. If you guys are interested, let me know. If I get enough people that say they want me to do that, maybe I'll do that. I just need to find a safe place to put them so that when I shoot them, they don't like light other stuff on fire. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and peel these up. I know people like watching things explode, so that might be a thing that will get a lot of views. If they even explode, they might do nothing. So, I mean, all the batteries I have, they've been sitting for so long. I don't even know if they have any charge left in them. So... Continue peeling off all this old adhesive. I'm getting a lot of text messages right now, but because I'm making a video, I can't really stop and respond to them. I might need to get a second phone so that I can just pause my video and respond while I'm doing this. Okay. Peel this out. Okay, so as you can see, there's not much residue left to clean up after peeling these up. There's a little bit on these where when we were cutting it, it basically cut um, below the foam. Okay, let's go ahead and peel the adhesive on these. I want to be careful not to accidentally put pressure on other components. Oh, this foam just ripped in there. Well, let's take this one out first because it's in the way. Oh. You don't want to try and peel these out too fast. If you go too fast, they'll just tear. Okay, so you kind of want to take it a bit slow. Go. All right, so after we finish getting all of this out, we are going to go ahead and clean up the adhesive residue using some rubbing alcohol. Okay. Most of it's coming out pretty nicely. Not going to need to do much cleanup here. Okay. The adhesive on this one actually comes out a lot nicer. Though I wish they didn't do an adhesive type battery. They could have easily um, just added some padding to hold it in place. Okay. Alright, last piece and then let's clean it up. There we go, so we got all of these out. Let's go ahead and clean up the residue. So we're gonna use some rubbing alcohol. All right, I'm using 91%. And this area, because there's not really anywhere for the alcohol to go, I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there. Oops, that's a lot. <laughs> so they have like this metal thing frame that will prevent it from getting around. So I'm gonna transfer the rubbing alcohol all over here. Alright, I didn't mean to put that much, I should have just put like a, a little dab to where it forms like the size of like a quarter or a dime. Alright, but uh, either way, should be okay. This one has this metal frame around the speaker to prevent it from going outside anywhere. And then it's raised over here where the track bed is. 
So basically what we're going to do is get the rubbing alcohol all in the adhesive residue and then it will come out super easy. I don't know if you can see now, I'm kind of just scraping it this way and there's pretty much no, um, no issue scraping that stuff out, okay? So I'm going to tilt it slightly forward so I can collect this stuff and put it over to this side. If you want, you can use like a paintbrush or something with this, or a toothbrush it might help to do that. Get the rubbing alcohol all over. Okay. All right, make sure to get all that residue out. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see the residue here, but as I add the rubbing alcohol, it's slowly like just letting me easily remove it. There you go. Okay. Put some there. There. So you can see now the residue scrapes up really easily. There's still kind of a bit there. So I need to add more rubbing alcohol. There we go. Okay, so you can see all this adhesive residue now is just peeling up, turning into a big glue blob. All right, so now that we got most of this all glooped up, we're going to get a paper towel, okay? And then basically we're gonna wipe this stuff up. Wipe all this glue residue out. You do wanna rotate the paper towel so that you can switch to a fresh side, okay? Like the residue I didn't scrub, so there we go. Okay, clean up all that old adhesive residue gunk. Down here too. Oh, this side I didn't work well enough, so I'm gonna have to use some more rubbing alcohol to get that out. Go ahead and wipe all the residue you can, and then we're gonna switch to a clean one here. You can see all the residue, it's all gross in there. I'm going to fold over the paper towel so that we're more on a cleaner side. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and wipe it up some more. Go ahead and continue wiping off that residue. Alright, I'm going to need a paper towel with more rubbing alcohol on it to make it easier to clean that up. But as you can see, most of it's gone. Let's get a new piece of paper towel. Just gonna get a small piece and we're just gonna like fold it up. Get the rubbing alcohol, pour it on. Usually you don't wanna do that over the computer just in case. All right, and then we'll clean this over. Okay, dry that up. Go ahead and clean this side. Dry that up. This side's gonna take a little work because I didn't soak it. But there we go. enough rubbing alcohol on it and you just keep rubbing it it'll eventually all clear up there we go Got to clean around this side all right now you can see it's all gross again let's go ahead and flip it over go to a clean side and let's just finish cleaning up this stuff Pretty much done. We're gonna have to put the new battery in. Put 
Okay, so we're good to go. Battery area is all cleaned up. Now we're going to lift up the motherboard again and put the tabs back underneath. Okay, get this back in there. Okay, under the corners, just like this. Okay, lift up the corner. Same thing with the other side. Find a spot to grab it. There we go. That back underneath there. Okay. There we go. Let's get the replacement battery. This battery's stuck in there. Okay. Let's get it out of the box. So the battery, it comes with screwdrivers and stuff usually, but I never use those because I have my own. Okay, so the battery comes like this in this packaging. I'm going to take it out. Alright, just slide it out. Here you can see it does come with this little tab because it's not removable from the bottom. Alright. So you're going to want to leave this clear tape on. That's to help you align this thing. And then we're going to peel off this. So this piece um, is just to protect the double stick adhesive. Let's go ahead and peel that off. Okay. You can see the double stick adhesive underneath. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to have to slide this, that tab under just like before. Okay. That's the hard part. Okay. It's going to be a little bit tricky. So let me go ahead and line this up first. So I'm going to move this aside. So this piece is kind of all bent weird. So make sure you kind of fold it out right. I'm going to bend this over so it stays flat with the rest of the battery. Okay. Just like that. Alright, so now let's go ahead and try and get this battery into place again. This is a little bit tricky to do. It is easier if you take the motherboard out just because you have more room to work. So right now we have to kind of like guide it under this small gap here. So if you want, you can take the entire motherboard out, but it's a lot more work if you, if you aren't sure what you're doing. So let's go ahead and get that slid under. You kind of have to do it at an angle. Oops, I flipped that thing over. Let's get this tab back in the right way. Stay in there, please. Okay. So you kind of have to like tip it forward a lot to get it under there. All right, you wanna be careful with the metal tab not to reconnect the battery. If you want, you can put like a little tab of something like a post-it note on there to help cover those tabs, make it a little bit easier. And there we go. Got that into place. Okay. Then you want to make sure that the oops, get that out of the way. Make sure that the screw mounts for here line up, and then you can slowly rotate this back down. Okay. Get that into place and drop the battery down. Okay. Just like that. Okay, the nice thing with this is it's on a cable, so it can kind of move around. So even if you don't have it aligned 100%, you can kind of move it. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Okay, did I switch? Okay, I switched to the T3. So let's switch back to the T5. Okay, and first thing we're going to do is put back the battery screws here. So you want to make sure this lines up. If you want, you can use this and kind of maneuver it. So I'm just using that to kind of align it the way I want. Okay, and this thing's not lined up right, so let's go ahead and pull that down a tiny bit. There we go. All right, get that all lined up, and then go ahead and put the screw in. There we go. So now, Make sure this metal tab is still kind of held up. 
you can take out the little card pieces that we use to hold it up. There we go, let it drop into place. Okay, make sure everything looks good. So first we're gonna put back all the motherboard screws. So let's go ahead and put the um, T5 screws in. Well, actually, let's tighten the little T3 screws. Okay, so again, this one, it did bring up the little mount thing with it. So just twist it backwards. If you hear it click, then you know it's in the right place, and then you can go ahead and twist it forward. All right, and then here's the other T3. Let's put that one back in. So as you can see, it's nice because everything, since we just lifted it up, everything should already be lined up and in place. So now we're basically just putting all the screws back down. We don't have to worry about all the little clips or anything like that. You don't have to worry about putting the wireless antennas and everything. Okay, we just gotta put all these screws back in. We didn't disconnect any of the cables. Oops. Almost lost that screw. Okay, since we didn't disconnect any of the cables, we don't have to worry about anything not being lined up right, anything being unclipped. The only thing we have to worry about is the trackpad now. Okay, let's go ahead and finish putting back in all these screws. Okay. And then make sure you put back the speaker connectors, of course. Okay, last screw, at least for those pieces. Okay, now let's go ahead and reconnect the speaker connector. So just line them up and then just clip it down. You just push it straight down. You can redo the adhesive as well. Same thing with this one, line it up, clip it down, push the adhesive back down. All right, and that's what we got. Let's go ahead and put the trackpad. So the trackpad can be a tiny bit tricky. Um, you're gonna have to use some tape to keep it aligned, so I'll show you that. All right, let me get the trackpad. It's a little bit dusty still. I'm gonna clean it a tiny bit. Again, you wanna be careful cleaning the trackpad because those little washers just fly off. Okay, so now we're going to open up the MacBook again, just like that. And then we're gonna have to guide the wire through here at an angle like that, move it over, move it over, and there we go. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, get the trackpad lined up. Okay, and we're gonna loosely fit the screws. We're only gonna put, we don't need to put all of them, but you can, okay. Let's go ahead and fit. Oops, I need to tear off that clear piece first. So let's tear off this clear piece. When you take this off, you actually want to roll it back. So roll it over like this. Okay, if you lift it straight up, you can actually um, damage the battery because it will separate the layers. I'm going to close this slowly. Okay. All right, so we're just rolling this adhesive off the battery just like this. If you pull it straight up, then again, you can separate the layers of the battery and it can damage it. So do it that way. All right, there we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start putting back the screws for the trackpad. Okay, again, I'm just loosely fitting them for now. You'll see why in a bit. Because as you can see, I can actually move the trackpad a lot with the screws. So that means even if you have all the screws in, it's not going to be lined up properly. So we're going to have to make sure to get it lined up before we tighten the screws down. And the trick for that is using some tape. So I'll show you guys that in a bit. Make sure these pieces aren't on top of the metal piece. Otherwise, when you close the lid, you might smash them. wondering the battery model numbers here a1820 but you will want to check yours in case you have the wrong one all right oops make sure i don't mix up the screws okay just like 
ですね Lost another screw. Okay. All right. So now that we got all the screws in, that's going to keep it all lined up. If you want, you can go ahead and replug this trackpad cable again. Um, if you want, you can put the double stick adhesive. It's not really necessary, but um, yeah, I'll put a little bit just so it doesn't move around. The double stick adhesive I have might be a little too strong, so I'm going to use a thinner one. Okay. This is an acrylic double stick adhesive, but again, you can use any double stick adhesive because it's not like it's going to short anything. There's no electronics under that cable. Okay. So I'm just going to get a little bit of this tape and stick it on here just so. Let me go ahead and peel it. It's not going to move around. Okay, peel off this. All right. Let go, please. I think that's too much static. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and reconnect the trackpad connector. Just get it all lined up. And push it down. There we go. Once you got that lined up and pushed down, you can go ahead and flatten this and then stick down the adhesive there. Okay, so as I was saying, we're gonna have to make sure that we get the trackpad all lined up. So the way I do that, let's go ahead and close my, okay. So the way I do that, I take the cover first. We're not gonna really snap it in. I'll snap one side just so it doesn't move around. Okay, just like that. And we're gonna flip this over that out of the way. All right, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to want to check and make sure this is lined up. All right. And then we're going to get some pieces of tape. Um, it helps to use like some somewhat strong tape. I'm going to cut this into two pieces. So you need two pieces. And what I like to do is fold over an edge like this. And you'll see why in a bit. So I did that on both sides. All right, so we're going to get this lined up. Make sure it's centered. All right, it's a little bit tricky because sometimes the lighting just makes it look like it's uncentered. All right, depending on which way it's casting shadows. And then you're gonna tape this down here, just like that on both sides. And then you're gonna wanna pick up the trackpad and look, take a close look, make sure it's all lined up. As you can see, it still moves around a little. So that. All right, so I'm going to take a quick look. Okay, it looks like it needs to move a tiny bit over to the left. So let's peel this up and try and like pull that over a tiny bit. There we go, stick that down. Let's see if I can release this a tiny bit. Push it over a little more to the left. There we go. Okay, so that looks centered. Okay, now we're going to close this. Flip it back over. I'm gonna pop this cover back off. Okay. Uh, let's see. Come on. I'm gonna have to use my fingernails, I guess. Get back underneath there. Pop this back up. There we go. Okay. Now that we got that out and everything is secured, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down these screws. Right, it helps to do one in the corner here and then one in the corner down here. And then back in the corner up here. And then back in the corner down there. All right, once you got all those screws in, you can go ahead and flip it over, open it up, double check your work. Uh, somehow one of the little washers came out, so it looks like I'm gonna have to actually peel the trackpad back up. But let's go ahead and, yep, let's peel this back out. All right, I mean, you guys know the process. I'm gonna peel this back up. Shoot. One of the washers somehow came off. Again, they're super sensitive. I don't know how they fall out so easily. And we're gonna have to take all of this back out, sadly. Gotta redo all this work. Oh man, and I put all the screws back in already. 
Well, let's go ahead and remove them all. This happens sometimes. Looks like everything's going right, but then you end up having some problems. That's why I put all the screws in to make sure those washers stayed in place, but somehow I guess when it when I closed the screen it bounced and it came out. screws to secure the trackpad in place. It's pretty crazy. All right, we've got all those screws out. Let's go ahead and disconnect and peel this back up. Okay, hopefully it's going to be okay. I'm going to hold this down. There we go. Okay, Let's let this open again, and let's see where the washer came out. Oh good, it's on the bottom one, so I can easily just drop that back down there. Let me make sure none of the other washers came out. Okay, they all look okay. So luckily it's just the washer at the very bottom here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use my screwdriver, pick up that washer, and we're going to drop it back on top. Alright, there we go. Let's go ahead and slowly lower this. Um, let's actually do it the, the safer way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift this up, grab the trackpad, and I'm going to try and hold the trackpad there while I put the screws in. Hopefully none of those washers are going to fall out again. Okay, so we're going to hold that in place. Take the screw. Okay, just like that, get the other corner, get that screw, tighten that one, alright, so that should keep it from bouncing around, so we can slowly lower the whole thing, and then we're going to use the tape again to line it all up, get all these in. I guess I'll just put the screws just to be extra safe. It'll hold them all in. Since these brackets at the top and the bottom corners, um, they actually have two little notches. I'm just going to put one screw on each side. Let's go ahead and put the screws here. Go. Don't forget the middle ones. Go. Okay, now that we got screws holding every washer in place, we can let the screen go down. Let's go ahead and put this trackpad connector back into place. Make sure you have it lined up right before you push it down. There we go. Alright, flatten this and then we'll go down that way again. Alright, I'm going to loosely fit all these other screws back in as well. Hopefully those customers are still going to let me work on their stuff because they haven't been answering their calls. Okay, got all of that. Let's go ahead and put the cover back on. I'm not going to clip it this time. We're just going to flip it over and hold it in place. Okay, open this up. Again, get the tape. Make sure it's lined up. that down, get this one, put that tape on there, line it up, tape it down, alright, looks good, close that, flip it back over, 
take the cover back off and go ahead and tighten all these screws. Sorry for it being longer than it should be, but I like to show what goes on with the repairs, what struggles go on, so you guys know what to expect, what to double check, what to triple check for. Okay. And also if my customers watch, then they see how much work it is to do these kinds of repairs. Okay, tighten this up. Now we got all the screws tightened into place. All that's left is to put the track pad bracket back on. Let me double check these screws. They should be good. All right, let's put the track pad bracket back in place using the T3 screwdriver or Torx 3 screwdriver. All right, drop the bracket back on. Get the screws. I always like to put one screw first, loosely, and that way I can align it. All right, just like that, line it up, get the second screw and tighten that back down. All right, just like that, there we go, and there we go. Done with the Torx 3, switch back to the T5 or Torx 5. Okay, last part, this tab when you put it down you want to make sure these gold connectors are centered as you can see it's slightly more over to the right so the way you fix that is you undo these screws slightly okay just loosely and then you can slide this this tab over slightly okay so you can see you can kind of move that around All right this one's a little bit not there we go so you can move that over more towards the side you want it to go, and then tighten these screws back down. There we go. All right, and then double check. Make sure you can see both tabs. We might have to move it up a tiny bit. There we go. So we're gonna move it slightly up and slightly over to the left. All right. Go, tighten that all the way down. So it's, that's as good as it's going to get. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the T5 screw, and then we're going to put that in. Slowly tighten that down, and now the battery's connected. So be careful because now the battery is live. Let's oops, let's undo this a little. It's going in kind of weird. There we go. All right, there we go. The battery is now live in the computer, so you want to be careful. Then we're going to take this tab, make sure you fold it back over, peel up the piece here. Oops, let me zoom in to make this easier to see. Okay, so this part is a little tricky, and if you don't have this in right, then your computer's not going to work properly, so make sure you get this right. Okay, so you're going to get that. I don't know if I can even show this because my finger is going to be in the way. But make sure get that tab lined up. Let's see if I can somehow show. That. There we go. So you can see the gold pins. Line it up. Push it in. It helps to pull this plastic tab over to make sure it's in all the way. And then you slide your finger over the top to put that latch back down. There we go. So to test it, let's go ahead and stick this piece back on. Okay, I line it up like this so I can see that the screw is lined up, and then I roll it over, and there we go. Okay, let's zoom back out, and to test it, you're going to have to actually plug it back in. A lot of times these MacBooks, when you change the battery, it's not going to work right away, so I'm just going to clip one side. We're going to test that real quick. Get the charger. Okay, so right now, if you were to open it, we can peel these out, of course. And if you push this, nothing happens. So we're gonna have to plug it in. Okay, I like to do an SMC and PRAM reset. The first time after booting it, I feel the trackpad clicking now. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, so here you heard the charger sound, so that's good. 
Apple logo is coming up, and there we go. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is PRAM and SMC reset. So SMC reset, control option shift on the left side, power button. If it works, the screen will go off, and that's an SMC reset. Make sure you do this before you log into your account because you don't want to like force shut off your computer while it's um, doing while it's doing stuff. All right, so there we go. It worked. Let's restart the computer now and do a PRAM reset. So you can either shut down and then power it on and then do this, or you can click restart and do this. So click restart, command option PNR, press and hold. You'll see the screen come on, and then you'll see it shut off. And that's how you know you did the PRAM reset properly. So it already did that. So now you can just let go. If you're not sure, you can just keep holding it. Um, but yeah, the screen will light up slightly. It'll still be black, but it lights up slightly and then you can let go. And if you did it right after, um, it'll turn itself back on. So just like that, the Apple logo goes back and there we go. So SMC PRAM reset. Good. If we unplug this, it's staying on. We're good. Let's go ahead and plug it back in. All right, sorry about that. I forgot I left my phone battery pack charging and it overheated. So anyways, um, battery is detecting when I plug it in. It does make the battery charging sound, so we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and put the screws back in, close this up. All right, we're gonna pop the cover back off. I don't know what they're running in the background, but it's running hot. I hear the fan running, okay. Wow, yeah, the processor is running hot. Battery's good, nice and cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on. So to put the cover opposite of sliding it off, we're gonna have to start it back here slightly. Okay, get it lined up. Make sure the edges here line up. And then we're gonna slide it back up. You wanna put some pressure here when you slide it. Okay, and then we're gonna go over to the left side doesn't matter which side you do first. We're gonna pull it slightly down. Make sure you put pressure there and then slide that up as well. Okay, it actually looks like it's too far over to the right over here, so we're gonna to have to move it. There we go. All right, and then continue sliding it, sliding it. Then make sure all the edges up here look flush. Everything looks good, all right. And then we can go ahead and snap that down, snap the center down and then put back all the P5 or Pentalobe 1.2 screws, all right? That's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Share my channel with others so that they can also uh, learn from my videos. If this video saved you a bunch of money, please consider throwing a little bit of those savings my way. Even a dollar helps. Everything is great, and it helps me um, feel appreciated for what I'm doing. All right, anyways... Thanks for watching guys. You're welcome to stay while I put the rest of the screws, but that's pretty much it. Alright, and last screw. I'm wondering if the overheating is they have a virus or something. I've seen a lot of people get a virus and it caused that. If that happens, I highly recommend using malware bytes um, and scanning your computer.